near, far, near, far. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an adjustable ring arbor for your metal lathe. Now you may ask yourself, what is an adjustable ring arbor? Hey, what the hell is an adjustable ring arbor? No, get your own. Anyway, let's get to it. So as I just said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an adjustable ring arbor for your metal lathe. The first thing you'll need is some round aluminum stock. The size doesn't matter, as we'll be turning it to the desired size on the lathe in a little bit. Here I marked where I wanted to cut it down to a smaller size. Just take it slow and turn the piece as you cut. Also, the longer you're cutting on the saw, the hotter the piece will get. Use water to cool it down so you don't burn your fingers. Now that the piece is cut, it's time to mount it into the lathe. I'm using a carbide tip cutting tool for the job. Not necessary, but it's nice to cut with. The first thing I do is face the end of the metal. Facing is just a fancy way of saying that you're making the end of the piece flat and perpendicular to the lathe axis. Now it's time to make some holes. You're always going to want to use a center drill before using a drill bit. For this job, I use the biggest one my lathe can handle. Here I put it in my tool chuck and make sure it's nice and tight. I turn the lathe on and use slow and steady pressure to push the center drill to make the pilot hole. Hmm, that's some delicious pilot hole. After the pilot hole is drilled, I then grab a 1364th drill bit. This is the first of two holes we'll be drilling for this project. When drilling a hole, I was taught to always use cutting lubricant. In this case, good old WD-40. For this piece, we'll be drilling all the way through so we can tap the hole later. Just remember, drilling a hole isn't a super fast process, so the same rule applies here. Use slow and steady pressure. Now it's time to drill the countersink hole. For this, we'll be using a 25 64 drill bit. I'm using this because it's just a little smaller than the screw I'll be using later. Keep watching, it'll make sense. Here I use my calipers to measure how deep I want the countersink to be. Once I find that number, I use blue painter's tape to visually show where I should stop drilling. It really is a great shop trick to have in your back pocket. I've used it many times. And I have never, never missed the depth that I have aimed for. Again, always use lube when drilling a hole. It makes the process that much more enjoyable. Um, yeah, so now that the countersink hole is drilled, it's time to mark the depth on where I'm going to turn. Here I carefully use a sharpie to give me a better reference point on where to stop. Now for the sake of the video, I'm marking and showing where each individual ring size will be. This isn't necessary, as you'll erase off all the markings on your first pass. Next, I grab my cheap ring sizer set. I'm using this to size my index, middle, ring, and pinky finger. For this project, you need to start with your largest finger size and work your way down to your smallest size. Alright, let's start turning. For the following clips, I sped up all the turning from 500 to 1000 percent so you can see the entire process. After almost every pass, I tested the ring sizer and it gave me a better sense on how much more I had to turn to get it down to the proper size. During this stage, I took small passes with the cutting tool. You just want to make sure you don't take too much off for each size. Here I double check with the ring sizer. Everything looks good and it's on to the next size. Here I repeat the same step as before. I mark the spot where I want to stop turning with the sharpie. 
I just want to say, while this isn't the most exciting project you can make on a metal lathe, it will help you practice all the steps you'll need for future projects. Again, double checking with the ring sizer, and it's on to the next size down. Because there's a lot of the same process now, I'm gonna really fast forward the video until I'm done with this stage, just so I don't bore you. And just like that, I'm done with this portion of the build. Now it's time to inspect my work. Looks good. Next, I switched out the drill bit for a countersink bit. By doing this, it allows the screw head to better open up the arbor and hold the ring nice and tight. Trust me, it'll make sense. I always find when using a countersink bit, take small cuts. It tends to do the job a lot better than you think. And just remember, when it comes to a metal lathe, once you remove material, you can't put it back. Would you look at that? That's countersunk. Now that the basic shape is done, the next step is to tap a thread from the back of the arbor. Haha, <laughs> how do you like that transition? So I tighten the arbor in my vise and grab a tap. When tapping a hole, just take your time and don't turn with too much pressure. There's always a chance you could break the tap. Sweet, the tap hole looks good. Let's test it out with the screw and see how it fits. So far so good. Now it's time to cut some relief slots on the bandsaw so that the screw can do its job by expanding the arbor. Safety tip, when cutting anything on a bandsaw, try to use a clamp or any other holding device. It's better to cut those on a saw rather than your fingers. Now add slow and steady pressure to the bandsaw. And even though you have the arbor in a vise, always keep in mind where your fingers are and where they're going. Now that the first set of relief cuts are done, repeat the process for the second set. And remember, these cuts don't have to be super straight. They just need to expand once you tighten the screw in them. Now that that's done, I do a final test fitting with the screw. Looks good to go. Now let's test it out on a ring I made to see if it actually works. Here you can see the screw expanding the relief cuts and holding the ring in place. You can use the arbor for many things, but here I'm using it to polish up a ring I made. And there you have it, an expandable ring arbor for your metal lathe. So here it is, the adjustable ring arbor I made on a metal lathe. Now I know that there's a lot of repeating steps in this project, but the more you repeat them, the more comfortable you'll be around a metal lathe for bigger and better projects. Now another cool thing about this project is that it allows you to make a variety of customizable, highly sought after items. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the little bell notification every time you want to get notified when I drop a new video. Also, if you want to support me on Patreon, all the information is down below. I hope you dug the project. Thanks for watching.